Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant, your host of Redefining Yourself. Thank you guys so much for joining me. This is a program that I developed with women in mind. And the women that are in, thinking of leaving, needing more education, or have left, or recovering from domestic violence. And my particular subject is narcissist abuse recovery. And as I say in every video, even though I created it with women in mind, because I had more clients that were women and more women that was disclosing this information to me, and I worked with more women than I did with men, uh, I do not ever, ever devalue the fact that men have been through the exact same thing. In these videos, uh, you see, uh, and even with the men that, that join me on the live, um, on the live feed uh, and make comments and share their stories with us. I am so honored because you are teaching us what it was like to be with a female narcissist. As you see, the traits are the, are the same, both male and female. They do the exact same thing. They they conduct themselves the same way. Um, and sometimes it's just a little difference between the way that a male may react to a female versus how a female may react to a male. And even um, how um, vindictive a female can be by using her sexuality or uh, you know women a lot of those women assume that men are weak anyway and so they will use that thought when they pursue you or even when they're in a relationship with you and that and and a lot of times that's females in general but especially a female that is a narcissist and so thank you guys so much first of all first of all for all the men that have joined us on this channel I am so honored that you were here thank you for sharing your stories thank you for commenting thank you for showing us that you guys go through the same thing we go through and the encouragement encouragement that you give women. Thank you guys so much. And especially Mr. RN, Mr. Naylor, um, Mr. Um, Ted, Mr. There's another gentleman. I, I have to go back and look. Uh, very intelligent gentlemen, and thank you so much uh, for being a part of this. Um, and those are the ones that normally speak out and say something on the videos. Uh, and for all the other ones that are just watching silently, thank you guys so much for following me and supporting me. And that I have something to say to you, and that you take value. You know, there's something valuable for you. Uh, to all the new subscribers, thank you guys so much for uh, subscribing. If you have not subscribed already, please subscribe to my uh, YouTube uh, channel, which is Dr. Carmen Bryant and it's overcoming narcissist abuse. And hit the bell so you know whenever I upload new videos and whenever I go live. And I usually go live on Sundays between eight and nine Pacific time. I was able to come home a little early on Sunday to, to come on. A lot of times when I come home, I've been gone all day, so my phone battery is, is dead. So sometimes when I'm able to get on at 6.30, I have to wait 30 minutes for my phone to charge. And so, but um, I thank you guys for hanging in there with me. And even though sometimes I know in different states and especially different countries, uh, you know, the time is different. And so thank you. Uh, you can also go to my Facebook page, which is Psychological Health Consultants and Services and hit the like button. Um, and then I also upload the videos there. Uh, I did film on Sunday on um, Periscope. Uh, and so to get people to come over to the YouTube channel. And as you see, I'm continuously having a problem with Facebook whenever I come on live. I don't know why, because I even changed devices. I went from the iPad to a um, cell phone. So I had a cell phone this time. Time, um, but uh, it even cut off on the um, uh, well I had a computer this time so I went from the from the iPad to the computer and it just shuts itself down after a while it just turns off I don't know why I don't know if it's because of the area that I am so I am sorry so for those of you that are on my Facebook page um, you know whenever I come on on Sundays I usually put on there when I post a video due to technical difficulties you know or there's a possibility it could be te technical difficulties come over to the YouTube channel and then you guys can still make comments the same way you do on Facebook and so today I just want to come on briefly and I always say that end up staying on for 30 minutes I wanted to come on briefly and I wanted to talk about the devalue stage. And so last Friday, I talked about the um, idealization or the love bombing phase. Uh, this is where they idealize you and they put you on this pedestal. You can do no wrong. Everything about you is great. And then remember prior to prior to the uh, love bombing, remember you're hunted. And so you have to be very careful what you post on your Facebook. You know, it is social media, you guys. This is not a personal conversation or a place of therapy on social media. You don't put all your information on there. You don't post all the pictures. And especially for some of you, you can tell that you are in a discard phase by the type of pictures that you're posting, uh, but you become narc bait. And so if you think this one was bad that you left, uh, imagine the next 
one that is hunting you on Facebook. You have to protect yourself. We are now in a time and a place, especially in technology, where narcissists hunt social media, especially the dating apps and the dating sites. Here in the state of Washington, um, a young lady was on, uh, and right there in Seattle, I think it was, uh, one of the nurses that worked with... Um, with some of uh, the, the ladies that I knew, um, went on a dating site, uh, planned a date. Um, on that day, she went out on a date and he murdered her and cut her body up and put her in a different uh, trash receptacles, I think it was, on her street, but killed her in her house. So she left behind three young children, three children, I think it was. And so I'm telling you guys, uh, sociopaths, psychopaths, narcissists, you know, they, the hunting grounds are the social media and, um, and, and dating apps. Uh, you're not that desperate that you have to have a man or have to have a woman, you know, do it the old fashioned way. You know, I can't tell you how to do it. I, I say do it the old fashioned way, you know, so you can see these people. So you can look at them in their face. You can feel them, you know, like something's not right about you. You are like super creepy. Um, and so, but we did talk about the fact that they're hunting and a lot of times a narcissist will study you for a very long time. How do you talk? What do you do? Um, they may show up in the area, you know, in the area that you shop in or the place of business, you know, they may show up to see how you respond or how you react when, when they show up in front of you, they may come to, to an event that you're, that you're at or they're following you on, um, you know, they're following you on your social media. But a lot of times they will, they will stalk you and watch you and find out where you are. Some of them will look and see where you live. What is your lifestyle? How do you talk? What is your education? They're trying to measure. They're trying to measure themselves up or try to figure out how to approach you. Uh, you know, a thug just can't approach a uh, a judge. And just, yo, 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 what's up? What's up? You know, that's not going to work. You have to be intelligent when you approach someone that's in the, in the, in the judicial system or the legal system, but they'll study you to figure out how do you talk? How do you, you know, so they'll know how to approach you. And then when they approach you and talk to you, you know, be aware. They've already been watching you for a while. They've been studying you for a while. So by the time a narcissist approaches you, they've already been studying you for a while. It is very calculated and it is very thought through. And when they focus on the prey, when they lock onto you, they're just like a pit bull. They won't let you go. They're going to keep you in their sight and they're going to do whatever they possibly can do to get you. That's where they come into the love bombing phase. And we talked about that on Friday. They'll do anything to you. That's that idealization. They put you on this pedestal. Your hair is pretty. Your eyelashes. Your eyelashes are pretty. You, the car, you know, the way everything about it. That's when they, that, that narc stare, you know, that, that, um, but it's that, um, it's almost like that hypnotic stare. They're staring at you and you think it's just so, oh my gosh, he's just into me or she's just into me. She's staring. No, they're, they're looking at you. It's almost like they're looking into your soul. They're studying you. They're studying your features. They're studying everything about you. They're almost absorbing you to figure you out. They're not staring at you because they want you. They're staring at you because they're trying to figure you out. They're trying to find your weaknesses. They're listening to the conversation. They're trying to mirror you. And remember in another video, I talked about, um, the eye gaze. They try to get an eye gaze with you to synchronize with your brain activity, with your brain waves. And the, the proof of it is, is when they start blinking, they're, they have synchronized blinking with you. They've connected with that frequency. Go, go and watch that video, you guys. And so everything that they do is very calculated, very thought through. Uh, and so now we talk about the devalue stage. In the devalue stage, see, most people assume that it's, it's the hunt, the love bombing, you know, the idealization, and then the devaluing where a lot of times where you have to pay attention and some of you can look back at your own relationship, the devaluing had started, already had started. The devaluing had already started in the love bombing phase, in the idealization phase. A narcissist can only keep up that image and that mask for so long because it's uncomfortable for them. And so they have to pretend they're actors. Uh, they are, they're great illusionists and it's very hard to keep up. And especially they have other sources of supply. A lot of time it's hard to keep up a story. Um, but what you'll find is that there's little signs that, um, they're already devaluing you in the love bombing or idealization stage. I'll give you an example. They want to take you out on a date and let's say that, um, um, they say that I'll come pick you up at eight o'clock or, you know, meet me here at eight o'clock. And then they purposely come fashionably late. They don't respect your time. I don't know if they're trying to make a, you know, they're trying to make a grand entrance, you know, because it's all about them. It's not about you. They want to make a grand entrance. Um, there are other little things like, um, let's think, um, they go order food. Uh, you guys go and order food. You may not like a specific food and they say, you need to order this. Oh, I don't like that. 
You know, we need to try it. You know, you can't say that you don't like it if you've never tried it. Oh, I've tried it. I don't like it. Well, try it again. You know, your taste buds may change. Okay, there goes some devalue right there because they're not respecting your thoughts. They don't respect how you think. Even though they may tell you they respect you, excuse me, guys, even though they may tell you they respect you and how you think, it's almost like you have conflicting messages. Uh, you go out to dinner and they're telling you or they order your food. Or remember I was saying that in the love bombing stage, they're introducing you and they move very, very, very quick. You know, you don't have a decision in what they're saying to people. This is my fiance. And you're thinking like, you never asked me to marry you. You know, where did you, and you know, we, we, we're probably planning on marrying them. And, and this is, and, and this is, you know, this is my girlfriend or this is my boyfriend or this is my fiance. And you're thinking, I did not have a choice in this matter. Why are you, you think, oh, that's cute. You know, he, he loves me or she loves me. No, that's a devaluing. They're devaluing your, even your space. You know, all of a sudden you'll notice they're all in your personal space and you did not permit them to be in your personal space. But it's like everything is so fast. They're just up in your personal space and you're thinking like, and it's almost to a point where you feel a little uncomfortable. But a lot of times what happens is people dismiss that. Those are little pieces and red flags of devaluing. Now, once they've locked you in, let's say you have something valuable. Some of you may have businesses, jobs, prestige. Um, so there's something about you. You remember, there's something about you that they want. It's not about the looks. Remember that even though looks may help them look better, you know, it's not about the look. You can look like donkey off a of Shrek or you can look like Shrek. You can look like a mule, but there's something that you have that they want. There's something about you that they want. Looks may help them if they are somatic. They're a somatic type where, um, you know, looks and material possessions. Then you become arm candy, him or her become arm candy. You know, that does help the image because they're all about image, image and what people think and, and how they're supposed to look and what I think you what I think people need to think of me. I need to make sure I play that role. And so even with you, um, they, the devalue stage is where everything, did I just skip over something? And so that, that is the idealization stage and that is the devaluing. You see the devaluing. And so, um, and remember, you know, it's not about the looks and it's not about the sex. It's about something that you have that's valuable, that they want. And so if you listen to them in the beginning, if you think about all the things they said in the beginning, they talk about all the things that they liked, everything that they liked about you. You're so pretty. You're so smart. You have a business, you have this, you know, you're this and oh my gosh, you're sexy and oh my gosh, you're this and you're so articulate and you're this and you're this. All those things that they're saying to you is all the things that they want from you. That is what they're focused on. That is what they see that they want from you in the devalue stage. Even after the love bombing and the idealization, when they believe they have you locked down, whether it's through sex and ladies, gentlemen too. My grandfather used to always say, why buy the cow if you can get the milk uh, for free? You're not supposed to test drive people. You know, you're not supposed to test drive people, but to each his own. But the thing about it, first, before you empty your heart out to someone, you show them your soul. You need to get to know them before you give up your body. Because once you bond sexually with a person, that's a whole nother emotional uh, connection with an individual, almost a spiritual connection with an individual, spiritual mind, soul, body. You have a totally different level of connection with that individual. That stuff should be held off. You need to get to know the person. You don't give up your goodies. You don't give up something that's so intimate and connect with someone and give them everything about you. That's just like playing house. You know, why are you playing house? Why are you playing wife? Why are you playing husband? Why are you taking upon the responsibilities of being that person's wife or being that husband, that being that person's husband if there is no commitment in the relationship? You're doing stuff um, that is that should only be permitted within a marriage. And then they take advantage of that. They're not going to marry you. They feel like, okay, if you feel like marriage is a very important thing in family, if there's something that you have, and especially if you, you guys have money, if there's something that you have, um, that they want, they'll even give you the marriage, give you the children to lock you down. Once they figured out that you are locked down and that you're not going to go anywhere and they're already bored with you. You've given them everything. They're already bored with you. You've given them your soul. You've told them, I love you too soon. A lot of times you even know in the relationship that things are moving too fast, but you throw off your guards. Those guards should stay up. 
until they have proven themselves to for you to give them your heart. They have to prove themselves worthy. And if you stay with it and if you keep your boundaries, a narcissist will start breaking down before you even give up the giddies. So you have to you have to maintain your boundaries, but you're being devalued. And then what happens in the devalue stage, you'll notice that a lot of those texts don't come as often. They don't say, I love you as often. They used to spend a lot of time with you. Now, you know, oh my gosh, you, you stop sweating me. You know, you are, uh, you're a leech. You just, everything that they said that they liked about you, now they begin to tell you how much they dislike that about you. I mean, you're not that smart. I mean, you're not that educated. Okay, so you have this and you have that. It's not like you're the only person to get that. Everything that they wanted from you, now they devalue you. Now that very same thing is they bring down the value of that to make you feel bad and start questioning yourself. And a lot of times you question yourself and not their motives. So you're being devalued and they're already on the hunt. Once they start that devalue uh, stage, that devalue phase, they're pretty much um, they're pretty much bored with you, and they grow bored very easy, very quickly. Once you've given them everything, they've won. They've won your soul. They won your mind. They won your emotions. And there, it, it's not long after that that the discard is coming. You know, or it might be a discard, the silent treatment because they're on the hunt again. They are creatures of habit. They are hunters. That's what narcissists are. They're hunters. They are never satisfied in any relationship that they're in because there's always some supply to go get that might be better than you. And the more supply they get or the different types of supply they get, the more they build. They don't have an identity for themselves. They build an identity based off of the people that they morph into or morph to be like. So today you might be a top model and tomorrow the next person might be a TV actor. The next person might be a senator or congresswoman or man, uh, the next person might be an astronaut, the next person, and then to devalue even more, they may pick that, like I said before, that one-eyed sloth with that giant tooth in the front, that big gold tooth in the front or something. They'll pick something less than or someone less than um, uh, than you to show you uh, it doesn't matter what you have. Then you're looking at yourself like, oh my gosh, how can he fall in love with something like that? Because you're putting yourself on their on their level. No, what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring you down to their level. Never let a narcissist bring you down to their level. They're going to do it. The little they say little things. They do little things that make you say. But that's even in the in, in the trauma bonding. In the trauma bonding, if they can't get what they want, they will torment you. Uh, you know the the. The, they, they try to force you to change your mind or say yes about something. And so they'll keep you up all night, keep you away from food. Uh, you know, they, uh, it's that torment to force you to change your mind or to give them what they want. Once you give in because you're tired, you're exhausted, you're tired of being tormented, then they stroke you again. You know, I love you, you know, and we don't have to argue like this. We don't have to do it. Or you catch them doing, they will not take accountability for their actions. They will not. Arguing with a narcissist is like arguing with yourself in a mirror. You'll never agree with yourself. That's like, so that is devaluing. So let me look and see what I have here about the devalue. This is the Good Man Project, the Good Men Project. Um, if you go to, let's see, and this is by Thomas C. Pfeiffer, September 22nd, 2018, How Narcissists Devalue Through Mean Nice Cycle. Um, and then I just picked out a few things that you'll, that um, he mentioned that um, narcissists do. Um, this is a tool the narcissist uses to bring you down to their level, the devalue stage, to bring you down to their level. Remember, they're bringing you down to their level. They saw you and put you on a pedestal and everything that they said to you in the love bombing phase, if you listen to it, is everything that was of value to them that they saw in you. Once they begin to devalue you, they'll take those same attributes or those same things that they talked about and they valued about you to bring you down to their level to devalue, make you feel irrelevant because that's how they feel. They project on you. You make me feel uncomfortable because you progress and you're more successful than I am. So they're going to take what you have and then they'll belittle you with, with the things that they used to like at one time. Wait a minute. At one point in time, you said you like my brown hair. You know, at one point in time, you said that you like big earrings, you know, or you like eyelashes or you like, you know, heels and or makeup, you know. And now uh, you don't like makeup. You don't like this. Or uh, you told me that you like a fade cut or you, you like the Jerry curl. You know, now you're devaluing me and you're talking about me. You know, so this is this is what they do. And it's confusing. So most people that are in these relationships, they're confused. Uh, so let's see. Um, 
he said that uh, they tell you what a terrible driver you you are, as opposed in in the beginning they thought you were an excellent driver. Um, you walk funny, you talk strange, you may have an accent, and I and I think accents are beautiful. And so you may have a beautiful accent, and they told you how beautiful and how sexy your accent is, male or female, doesn't matter, and want you to say stuff in your language. Then all of a sudden you talk strange. You don't even sound right when you speak English. Your English is all jacked up. You know, nobody understands what you're saying. Don't say anything to nobody because they're, they're going to be confused. They don't know what you're saying. You don't even know what you're saying. But at, at all this time before you met the narcissist, you could communicate with people with or without an accent. You were fine. You know, you didn't walk funny at one point in time. But after the narcissist, now you feel like one leg is shorter than the other. That's them. Not you. That's them. Now you're trying to readjust your walk. Okay, maybe I need to walk. Like, you don't, re you keep walking the way you were walking before. Peg, leg or not, it doesn't matter. That's what was attractive to them at first. Now they got to, that, that was cute at one time. Now it's ugly. One leg, one leg is shorter than the other and one eyeball is bigger than the other. But it was cute when they were looking, looking at you. Now, all of a sudden they want you to feel bad about yourself. But at the same time, that meant, may have been a, a, a information that you gave them. That's a vulnerability to you that you told them that you're very self-conscious about that. So they'll take whatever you say that you were self-conscious about or that, that is very sensitive to you and they use it to hurt you on purpose, to devalue you, to hurt you. Even to gaslight. Uh, let's see. Uh, they may say something about your clothes or your eating habits. Now, keep in mind, you might be with a man or a woman that has no type of etiquette whatsoever. Now, and you may have table etiquette. You may even close your mouth when you chew, you know, and this individual chews with their mouth open. This individual eats. Have you ever seen people? I don't know if you guys have learned. I know learned a long time ago how to eat, especially being in the military. You know, you cut, you cut with this hand and you eat with this hand. So this is my right hand. I'm right handed. And so you cut with the right hand and you pick it up with the left hand and put it in your mouth. And that's how you cut. And they take the fork and knife and they eat like a caveman or a cave woman. And they just, they're just, so they're literally almost embarrassing you, you know, in front of people. It even gets to a point where you'll know it's a red flag when you're almost embarrassed to take them in public or embarrassed to be around your friends and family with this individual. They're just embarrassing to you. But what they'll do is they turn it around and tell you, I'm embarrassed to be anywhere with you. You're fat, you're nasty, you're ugly, you don't know how to eat. This has nothing to do with you guys. This has everything to do with how they perceive themselves. Let's see. Um, uh, um, so you may have purchased them gifts, and then all of a sudden now the gifts that you purchased for them fall short of how good they've been to you. You know, you didn't have a problem buying them gifts, but they complain so much about the gifts that all of a sudden you decided not to buy any more gifts. So later on, they start complaining to family and friends that you don't ever buy them any gifts. No, because everything that you bought them, every everything that you ever tried to buy them out of your heart, you know, that you cared, they always had something negative to say until some people just back up and stop buying gifts altogether. Here, take the money and go buy yourself something. See, you're an income, you are a inconsiderate individual. You don't think about anyone and you won't even buy so-and-so buys his wife or his his um his um husband uh this and that and this you don't even take the time to and then you argue with them like it doesn't matter everything that i've ever bought you don't like it you you devalue it you you have something negative to say about it so i just stop buying it whatsoever because no matter what i do is not going to please you but see now you're confused and they make you look bad in front of other people uh let's see you start getting frustrated. They may pull back from that, from their mean behavior and throw you a bone of sweetness. See that trauma bonding. Um, their act is so good. It makes you question if there was even a problem to begin with. So that gaslighting, or is it all in your head at gaslighting? Okay. So let's see what else. So they, they devalue anything, your hobby, your skill set, your gifts, they just divide because they, they're jealous of you. They're jealous individuals. So hopefully, um, I didn't stay on too long. Uh, hopefully this makes sense to you guys. So remember, we were talking about the the hunt, social media. We were talking about the love bombing. And we're talking about the devaluing. The devaluing also overlaps over into the idealize, idealization, the love bombing phase. And it overlaps uh, with that because there are red flags. They're already devaluing you as they're pursuing you. They don't think about you. They're thinking about themselves. And the game, you get the mask falls off because there's only so long that you they can play this game. And they get uncomfortable because it's not natural for them to do it. All they're trying to do is get you. And eventually, they just become their old regular self again. Some of them are very nasty and bitter. They always have something negative to say to make you feel bad about yourself or your looks, your kids, anything. You know, even uh, for those of you that may be single parents, mother or father. 
single fathers, single mothers, they have something negative to say about your parenting, yet there was no problem with your parenting. You're this horrible mother, horrible father. Uh, your kids are going to be, you know, uh, uh, def defected, de dysfunctional because you're dysfunctional. Something's mentally wrong with you. Now you start thinking something's wrong. You might be depressed. You might be traumatized. That might, that person might be the problem. So the biggest problem may not be that you have an issue. The biggest issue you may have is the narc that is in your house. So hopefully this has helped you today. Uh, leave some comments. Let me know what you think. Um, some of you guys might be in that phase. Some of you guys are, are, you know, trying to get out the situation. Some of you guys now are having the aha moment uh, where you realize, oh, I recognize this behavior. Yes, indeed. Uh, so thank you guys once again for tuning in. Thank you for following me. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Carmen Bryant with a T. I always say there is a Brian. There's a prophet, uh, Carmen Bryant, but I am Dr. Carmen Bryant and overcoming narcissist abuse. Please hit the subscribe uh, button, hit the, the bell, or oh, this is the thumbs up on the Facebook, hit the bell um, and make sure that, um, so that you can hear whenever I upload a new video, whenever I come on live. Also, I wanted to say for those of you that are in the Washington State area. There is a conference coming up in Bellevue, Washington on February 15th and 16th, and it is the Mending Souls Conference. It's Pastor Frank and his beautiful bride, First Lady um, Doris Gayway. Hopefully I pronounced that right, Gayway. They are uh, doing a Mending Souls Conference, and it is the 15th, where they're going to have dynamic speakers on that evening, on Friday, and then on Saturday, they have workshops during the day, and then they have, in the evening, it's a Valentine Ball, so you can dress up in all your pretty gowns. Uh, for those of you guys got your old prom dress you still uh, uh, can fit in, go ahead and put those on. Um, uh, I have been... Uh, honored and asked to be one of the workshop speakers for Saturday. So for those of you that can make it out to Washington, go on. Uh, I think it's, um, it's the Mending Souls Conference. Look on Facebook. It's Mending Souls Conference, and I show you all the information um, on how to register, what's happening, and there's a flyer that I did post on my Facebook. So those of you that are my subscribers and those of Facebook followers, I did put a um, flyer um, uh, on there, and it has all the speakers on there. It has the events on there, and it also tell you where you can register. So for those of you um, that have been following me, um, uh, those of you that are on my Facebook page, uh, I am... Uh, one of the speakers at the workshop and this is a mending souls conference is dealing with single single again divorced married couple so if you boot up with someone uh it is a christian event uh but it is a uh a uh, informational program uh, or an informational event that also interjects Christian beliefs. So those of you that um, have a Christian belief system uh, and you're interested, you don't have to be a Christian to come out to it, but you are welcome to come out and then you get to meet me. I get to meet you for the first time. So please go to the Mending Souls Conference. It is on Facebook and look at the information. See if you want to go. I don't think you have to go to the ball so you can buy tickets to go to the workshop or the, the service that they have on Friday and and you guys come on out there. Uh, there's going to be different workshops uh, there. So you can pick whatever workshop you want to go. And those of you that are my subscribers and those are Facebook followers, if you'd like to come out, I will be there. We can meet for the first time. It will be such an honor. And thank you guys once again for following me. Go to my Facebook page. You can hit the thumbs up. Uh, do know that on Sundays I come on between 8 and 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, which is West Coast. And so um, I have been having some issues with Facebook. I don't know why I've changed devices. Uh, maybe I'll try it one more time on Sunday, but I am live on YouTube. I'm faithful to YouTube. I will be live on YouTube. So those of you that don't see me on Sunday, come over to the YouTube channel. I usually post something if I'm having issues with it. Come over to the YouTube channel. Once again, thank you guys so much. As my friend always says, go and be great.